Ah. Big guy. Who the hell was he talking about? <laughs> oh, we. Mama, mm. here come that yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? It's your boy Sinjo with the Intel, and you already see Rakai is in the building. What's going on, boss man? Hello, governor. <laughs> Reacher, episode three, one and two. This is a season that's been getting a lot of buzz. It is Amazon's most popular project right now. And if you need to catch up with some of the previous episodes, don't worry, there is a link in the description for that. And also make sure you stay to the very end because we're going to chop it up, have a bit of a discussion, a review, if you will, of everything that we've seen. And I promise you, you're going to love our perspective. So without any further ado, Let's get started. Missile launcher. Hey. Oh, they are tuning him up. You're not saving him by not talking. Hmm. <laughs> it's like okay. You don't do disrespect. Let me show you something. You've got nothing to say. Mm. Ah, I don't even know if I can watch this. Ah, oh. uh -huh. oh. why did my leg start hurting? <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna take this broken ankle and put my foot in your ass. Get him ready. Yeah, you'll get back. It's gonna be mm. it's gonna be epic. Mm. It's going to be epic. And he was there for the drop off too. And this dude can't be the CEO. Hey, He's still alive. He's still conscious. Ah. What's so funny? I was just thinking. About what the big guy's gonna do to you. <laughs> yeah. He's absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, bro. Dang. Ah. Oh. Big guy. Who the hell was he talking about? <laughs> Oh, we, mama, mm. here come that yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. We're going to actually buy some legitimate guns this time. Is that I'll comic books? 17. He sells comics and pistols? Just so you, you know, know. I've never seen anybody put you apply for your permit. comics on the roof. Seven day waiting like period, or you can purchase a firearm. You can only buy one in a 30 day window. Come on, it's America. <laughs> Rules say you can lend these firearms to a friend, which, as you know, is one of the conditions for legal temporary transfer under New Jersey law. Nice to meet you, friend. I'm Joe Gordon. <laughs> Soon you're going to be target shooting or oh. hunting. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you're aware that uh, transferred firearms can only be used in the presence and supervision of the legal owner, and that would be me. How about you be with me in spirit, Frank? <laughs> Well, if it's good enough for God, it's good enough for me. America. <laughs> America. Oh. Okay. What was that? Oh, nothing. Just listening to a 200 hitter complain about his new bat. Hey, I'm a great shot. You're average at best. <laughs> that time in Biloxi. Was the luckiest shot I've ever seen. Thank you. Man, you couldn't hit a donkey's ass with a banjo. <laughs> Fine, but I don't got to like it. Well, I like mine. Red and 92. Like Swan used to carry. Stay on target. Yeah. Swan's as dead as his dog. What? We all know it. It pisses you off as much as it does me. It's good. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Reacher. Uh-oh. You okay with staying somewhere so fancy? Here come Dominic. <laughs> Any reason I shouldn't pull over? <laughs> I wasn't going fast enough to be pulled over. I know. You think anyone found out about the friends you and Dixon made in Atlantic City? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Look at course. the footprint. Here, here he mm -hmm. goes. Yeah. He's going to try and get his lick back. Look. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, slugger. <laughs> I'll pay you back the bail money. Don't forget the room and the plane ticket. What are you waiting for? Get out. Hands on the roof, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> How can I be a service? You went to law school, right? Yeah, Rutgers. So, kinda. You can kiss my ass. <laughs> None of that is remotely accurate. We can agree to disagree. Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> well, he sounded legit. He did. How'd you find us? I drove around looking for the car with a giant asshole in it. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled the plate off her rental car, put a bolo out so I know if and when you guys got back to New York. Cruiser car spotted you, and here we are, you fucking genius. <laughs> That's actually not bad, though. I know, man. Yo, Dominic, he always, he always delivers with his roles. You got to give it to him. Your icebreakers for the kiddies on the playground? That ain't even funny. <laughs> What's with the bag, Russo? It's a bag of none of your fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> Full of none of your fucking business and shove it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> He always played the same character, though. He does. He's the same dude all the time. This parking pass was found in a person of interest's car. Look at her, look at her clock in her. Mm -hmm. This isn't just any case we're working on. The, uh, the victims happen to be our friends. I'm so sorry. Why would that matter? I'll see what I can find. Thank you. Is that a black lady? I don't know. She got, she got something. Somebody hopped the fence. Mm-hmm. It's about besides your bruised face. I think it's more about his bruised ego. For the record, that was a sucker punch, okay? Technically, the airbag sucker punch. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you just take off the cuffs or send the arrest and you guys can settle it right here? What kind of lawyer are you? <laughs> <laughs> Kidnapped and bodies found upstate. I heard directly from the Catskill PD. How the hell you guys know about that? Guess we're just two steps ahead of you, Sipowitz. No, you're not two steps ahead of me. <laughs> Sipowitz. And if you want me to arrest you and put you in the tombs, I can make that happen. But that's not going to solve these murders. And me and you both wanting that is the one thing we have in common. Okay, so he ain't necessarily Foden. Mm -hmm. Calvin Franz's phone logs had multiple calls to you. Tony Swan, Jorge Sanchez, Manuel Orozco. But he didn't call you, though. Why is that? I don't have a phone. If we share what we've got, you better have something for us in return. Okay. We didn't hire him. It was too small an operation for our needs, but his resume was still on file with his address. Dang, you really did. You dug in. Mm, I don't know if I trust it. Seems like you want to keep things off the books. Say I'm dirty again, see what happens. Tough talk when I'm cuffed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Had the tech geeks look it over. They found an unfinished job in the queue. Okay. They didn't print due to low ink. Maybe you're not the only good investigator in the room. Okay. This guy's name most likely isn't Azari Mahmoud. You were never going to mention that? You're going to want DHS to flag all of his aliases. Look, he had a mob memorized. Yeah, I mean, it's Reacher, though, so. You think the guy's got wrapped up in something involving terrorism? Yeah. Maybe. He's processing the whole accomplice thing. <clears throat> Whatever it is, this case just got a whole lot bigger than what we thought it was. And you and remember that question you just asked yes, uh, on the last episode? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the writers do a good job of at least trying to. Off that arson case. What? Mm -hmm. Live in the world of realism. This guy probably had a few too many soda pops, got handsy with some guy's girl, push, shove, from outside, bang, bang. It could be a... Oh, that must be Swan right there. Except the, on his palm. Yeah, they don't stamp at this place anyways. That must be Swan. Lieutenant Colonel. Oh, cut the shit, Reacher. I'm in my Wranglers, for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's a fighter kite. I saw these all the time in Afghanistan. Kite fighting's popular there. Mm. So is heroin production. Kite fighting. Yeah, you ever read that book, The Kite Runner? No. I know it, but I never read it. I'm thinking I have the name of someone who killed some of the best people I know. So you set up. Gonna find those fuckers and they're gonna learn exactly why you do not mess with the special investigators. Mm. Reacher sure knew what he was doing when he put us together, didn't he? Guy's got good instincts. Guy's got good everything. <laughs> <laughs> Reacher will be there when I need him. No questions asked. Oh my God. 
That's it. Eight Calendar? Years, months. Yeah. Yeah. There's seven sheets, right? On each sheet, there's 26 or 27 numerical tabulations. That is... If you run them all together, you could fit everything on one page instead of seven. But clearly, they wanted seven. One has 27. Why? I've understood nothing since you said, oh my god. Was it a leap year thing? I mean, those numbers went from pretty good in month one to abysmal in month seven. So the real question is, what kind of somethings were they counting? Through half-inch chain-link fence across the yard, underneath the porch rail, dead center in the bolt lock. Biloxi police chief said it was the most incredible shot he'd ever seen. He's still talking about that shot. Nah, y'all don't spooked him. He better get out of there. What in the hell? <laughs> they are the worst ever. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. It's light. Nothing in it. Yep. Mm hmm But how are you going to get into New York without an ID? I'll handle it. You going to get plastic surgery? Right? No, he's just going to go see that dude and take his ID. Oh, I had nails all in. Dang. Nice. Look at the nails there. all in the walls. <laughs> Dang. Oh. Ooh, oh, the wee. triple tap. Mm hmm. There's a lot of bad guys in this house. A like. lot. Oh, he got a vest on. Mm. Like, I mm. like O'Donnell, but what what exactly does he do? Mm. Oh, there go the brass knuckles. Oh, I was wondering if we was ever going to see them. Oh. Yeah, you know, he rolls with the brass knuckles and the blade. <laughs> yeah, he still got that vest on. Mm-hmm. Better get them headshots. Donkey's ass, meet Banjo. <laughs> Hey, that triple, that triple tap boy is lethal. <laughs> All clear upstairs. <laughs> uh oh, Ferris Bueller scene. <laughs> yeah, you should be tired, man. You just literally ran through four fences. Uh oh, and, and beat him with a grill. Brian Collins, who do you work for? New Age? Do you work at New Age? Are you having a heart attack? Are you having a heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> gotta be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta give him CPR. Look like, at your ass up. Who's running this operation? Collins! <sighs> really? <sighs> Asshole. <laughs> All those Never. explosions and gunfire. Ain't no cops around yet. Outside muscle. Guy I just left dead was here to make sure they got the job done. What now? We get the hell out of here. Pretty sure Miss Goddle's been to call the cops by now. But not the only that. The whole block has called the cops by now, man. But but not only that. Remember when old girl came back and brought back? Some just told me that that shit was a setup. Like, she... Mm-hmm. No, you called it. You said you didn't know if you trusted her. I have a feeling the night's not done with us yet. Yeah. You were saying? A lot of angry and a lot of balds about to blow into town. <laughs> yeah, drop bodies everywhere. So you four guys just decided to walk into a place where you knew people were waiting to kill you. Well, in our defense, we did blow it up first. <laughs> Where's his car? We decided to take it with us last minute. Plate swap parked out back. Head in to hide as much damage as possible. You never know when you could use another vehicle. <laughs> He's resourceful. That list of aliases we gave you is useless to us now. Useless to him too. But there's no way his plan, whatever it is, isn't still in motion. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, I need you guys to stay the fuck put until you hear from me. And let me give you a number so you don't have to come around where you're not wanted every time you need to talk. <laughs> I thought you didn't have a phone. It's not mine. It belonged to someone I killed. <laughs> he's, like, he's like this man I'm serious no more fucking cowboy shit 
You can't put a leash on that team. <laughs> Word, really? You think you think a good a stern talking to is gonna stop them? So, what are we gonna do now, boss? <laughs> Saddle up. See, we're about to do a whole lot of cowboy shit. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Like, are you for real? Yo, they don't even have a yeah. windshield. And if I'm late, don't wait for me. Who are uh, Major? Hey. They just passed a law in Philly that you can't wear ski masks. I mean, straight to business. And I love it. It's like, yeah, we about to do a whole lot of cowboy shit. <laughs> He's like, don't do anything until I tell you. I can't believe you were going to leave me. <laughs> Find something? No fucking way. Who is it? Holy oh, swan. word is Swan. He was working at New Age. And right next to the man. The people who've been trying to kill us. Huh. That's an interesting little turn. If you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see a cut down version of our reaction because we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture in picture. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us uncut, uninterrupted, head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Sintel. Become a member of this channel. You'll get access to the full uncut reaction, but you will need your own Netflix, HBO Max, or Disney Plus subscription. So you can open up each episode in an adjacent window to our reaction. We'll give you a little time with a small reference video at the bottom of the screen to help you sync up the footage. And it'll be like you're watching it with your favorite pals from the internet. But here's the thing, like with that little bit of information and considering like the nature of their team, I wouldn't have read, if I was a part of the team, I probably wouldn't have read into it too much and and seen it more as him just trying to get in to to kind of like be undercover you know but i think i think it's supposed to lead or, us to the the viewers to believe that they, he was in cahoots though yeah that he's crooked yeah because it could very much be that he was working with them and then found out some crooked shit that they was doing mm. but so that he didn't get caught in the question knew he was dealing with you know some, maybe some dangerous people that's why he called franzi and orozco and right. sanchez you know to hey i need you to look into this you know what i'm saying like, yeah yeah it's it, it's a it's a bit of misdirection but um i don't know if i'm buying into that just yet um you called it uh regarding the the woman that works at the works at the office you know she played it off like she was you know heart had a heartfelt moment of their friends being injured and they took that and gave us probably one of the best scenes of the episode, uh, the, yeah. the home invasion with the <laughs> pipe uh, bombs and everything. Yo, that, hey, was a, that, that was a great scene, man. That that whole breakdown was awesome. Not only that, that was a great scene because it was all four of them. Yeah. So it was akin to the bar fight, but we got more actual fighting. Yeah. I mean, Dixon and uh, O'Donnell was, was getting handled and they had to, you know, yeah. fight their way back, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and Reacher... Hey, he's at her double and triple tapping everybody. Like, <laughs> yeah, was, him and Neagley was taking care of business down on the first floor, but uh, Dixon and, and O'Donnell got on the second floor and had a little little difficulty. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was the, the group project, you know. You know, everybody everybody mm -hmm. pulled their weight. I did like the fact that uh, that Dixon and O'Donnell were having trouble, you know, because don't get me wrong, I, I love seeing our team kick ass, but it also good to see that there, there's like a or mortality to the team if there's a, if that if that makes sense like like they they're not just yeah. invincible you know um mm -hmm. and, and 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 to be fair you know what i'm saying i mean you you think you know reacher probably is the one you know he's the a1 the alpha you know he's probably the most unkillable of the group mm -hmm. neagley seemed like she just right behind him right she behind seems like she is like a dangerous two. chick yeah but i mean <laughs> you know Dixon is a forensic accountant. She's a numbers chick. You know what I'm saying? O'Donnell. I don't, we don't know. What you he's doing. you call it too. You're like, what does he do with <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's the resident zinger guy. Yeah. Like he, he got all the hot hot takes, but you know, I'm sure he does something along the same lines of everybody else. It just seems to be he's not as good at it. He just got a lot of charisma. Yeah. You know, and got some mouth. He reminds me of a, a face on uh, the A-Team. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That yeah. is perfect. Yeah. Uh, 
Hey, look at this. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm we're watching that scene yeah. again. <laughs> that was a great damn scene. Oh, the, that was a great scene. Oh, the triple taps. Because you always hear in movies, it's always about the double tap, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the chest to stop and then one mm -hmm. of the head to close. But the triple tap, dog, it just seems a little more poignant. I don't know. It seems uh, more, more bespoke to the group. Um, mm -hmm. I was saying uh, in the previous episode when they had the, uh, the construction fight scene, um, and I was like, hey, man, you might need to leave some people alive. But it, and, there's, right. and there's also I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I put Reacher in like the Batman kind of category. Like if he doesn't have to kill, mm -hmm. he won't. Uh, yeah, you can throw all that out the window, uh, <laughs> especially, yeah. especially with this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like Batman. Like, you know, who are you? <laughs> I am vengeance. <laughs> this, this, it just... I'm out here to whoop yeah, ass, man. and I don't really need to take a few, uh, take any names. Reach is not trying to hear none of that. Um, okay, another great thing um, that I liked about this episode is we we had hinted earlier before uh, with with the actor uh, Dominic. Um, I always forget his last name. Uh, Lumberdozy. Yeah, Lumberdozy, and how you know he's. He's a great actor in what he does. He knows his lane, right? He plays yeah. like this. He plays like the Brooklyn or the New York, you know, mm -hmm. officer just to a T. And he's done it again. And he's given us, or at least given me, exactly what I'm looking for with him. Like he's he's perfect. You know, he's he, he knows the assignment. And seeing him go back and forth for Jack Reacher, I was I, was, I thought that was kind of I thought that was kind of fun. I thought that I thought that that was excellent too because. Um, it's nice to see him to be a um not a crooked cop you know yeah. he's just a, a a solid italian american cop who just wants to get the job done you know don't put me in a position of compromise i'm not dirty or whatever i just want y'all to you know if we're gonna help each other you know i just want to close these cases yeah. i want to find out who's murdering these people and leaving them in my backyard you know yeah don't go out here and do no cowboy shit. <laughs> I love that part. Uh, like, he said, we going to do a whole yeah, lot of cowboy a whole, shit. A whole lot of it, but we ain't going to do a little bit, bro. I need you I to mean, be ready. I mean, they did so much. He might as well yell yee-haw at the end of that shit. <laughs> um, so we got a chance to see a little bit more of Swan. Uh, they went back and did a case uh, in the past where some, I guess, officer or I mean, excuse me some soldier was in got caught up in drugs and we had a little bit of investigation and then we had like a random person kind of show up which is kind of interesting like i guess their their senior officer or who runs the, right. the group as well he kind of pops up and kind of you know i don't know something about that, that just seems like from a writing standpoint i'm like Okay. It's not. It's not random. Yeah. It's, yeah. Right. It's like, why are you here, my guy? Like, like you. We we got your full name and a backstory and all this other stuff. Like that. He's got kids and all this other stuff. Yeah. Writers don't write all of that just for for no reason. There's there's something more to to Hortense. I think that was his name. Yeah. All right. So here's my estimation, and the reason why pulling him out into that small snippet of a scene why it was important. He is the person I remember because in that scene too, he talked about, you know, he's uh, his, his wife or whatever is at home. He's got, you know, a child, eight and a half, you know, she's eight and a half, either eight and a half months or she's eight and a half. Uh, she's, that's how pregnant she is. Right. So the baby's here either day, any day, or the baby is a, still a small toddler. Um, what I got from that, the reason why we introduced him, mm -hmm. and then as you see the revelation with Swan in that picture at the end, mm -hmm is he is the link between swan and that company okay you know ah, i'm thinking okay i'm thinking okay. because he's got a family and you know maybe the military is not you know his family's growing or whatever mm -hmm. he got in got out and got into private contracting doing whatever this work with this this tech company was mm -hmm. and he's the one that pulled in swan to either work there um you know, and then when Swan got there, maybe he saw some stuff that's not right because that guy was not part of the, the you know, of the special investigators. Right, right, right. But Sw I, I think, because here's the thing, Swan can't be dirty. Okay, how? How sway? Because that calls Reacher's judgment into question. You mean to tell me that Reacher would handpick mm. these group of people mm. who seem like whatever the circumstances, they could be on the take. They could be dirty. 
No. Because, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of cases that I'm sure that they covered that, you know what I'm saying, they probably saw their share of dope, money, you know, mm. whatever. And he had to know without a shadow of doubt that the people that he went to war with that, you know, had the kind of integrity, you know, even if they're an asshole, they're a smart mouth like O'Donnell or whatever, mm -hmm. that they're not on the take. Okay. They're clean. We are the special investigators. Right. We investigate the dirty. So even if life was happening for Swan mm -hmm. and he just took this tech position, I don't think, I don't think that Reacher would recruit people to his special team right. that had that kind of gray area when it came to integrity. I Now, the other guy who dropped by the spot, okay. yeah, he definitely could be dirty and introduce this company to Swan. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Swan went in undercover. Maybe did. Maybe just working there and stumbled upon some hinky shit. But I don't think Swan is dirty. I just think that that dude is is gonna provide the leak. I'm just a thought. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I certainly and I think everything you're saying is valid. But here here's my thing. Here's my counter. I think that all of his team has good intentions, and we get a chance to see what the intentions are and the types of people they are when they had the conversation in the in in the room in Reno or well not Reno but in um uh, Atlantic City and they were mm -hmm. talking about their lives right we got to hear mm -hmm. about Dixon and what what pushes her her why she was like I was gonna get married mm -hmm. but not really because I want to be true to myself Reacher had his Neagley's just you know she's like I'm in it for the work you know O'Donnell's because he's a family man we don't have in we even got a little bit of the backstory for some of the other people that that have been killed uh but we didn't really get one for swan like we don't swan but swan's house was the one that they went to where shit was kind of tow up it, the, where the the dog was right, dead where the Remember? dog was dead the right? dead dog right. in the in the uh in the bathroom but see but that's it but that that's all we know so we don't know like what his new motivation could be like it could be something that he's doing for noble reasons but is he still is still illegal you know what i'm saying all I, all i'm saying is that swan just like everybody else okay still had the picture framed of the special That's investigators in his living room That's right true if you are out here on the doing some dirty shit, you don't put that up. That's not like you don't run a dope house and be like, you know what? I need this big picture of Jesus right here <laughs> while I'm selling dope to the kids in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like you, know, you don't you don't put up the picture of the special investigators and you doing dirt. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. No, I see. I see where you're coming from. Well, we well we are going to find out is because Richard definitely gonna get to the bottom of it of uh, the why he's sitting right there on the on the left side of the of the dirtiest man in the biz, um, and uh, yeah. so the the only other thing that's kind of like left open is um, you know our Bond villain, you know he he pops into the uh, to the airport discovers that he's kind of been made uh, heads for the hills, um, you know how how are you still feeling regarding that and and just the other our other villain as well. I mean, I think our, our Bond villain is extremely sharp. He's on it. Um, and I don't know. Are these dudes fresh out of the academy? Because they look kind of old. The black guy and the other guy. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all are the worst undercover people <laughs> in the history of undercover people. <laughs> he looking like, yeah. like that dude in the yeah. meme, the black kid in the meme that's kind of like looking to the left a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, they in an airport and they think this is the mannequin challenge. Like, they are not moving. What in the hell? Yeah, there's nothing funny about that. Like, yeah. Shit. Oh. All right. Um, I think overall, you know, for the first three episodes, let's talk about this real quick. Let's 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 get a little bit big picture. Uh, so mm -hmm. the very first three episodes that Amazon dropped, the kind of I do like how they do that. They're like, we'll give you the first three to like really get you sucked in, and then we're gonna do yeah. week to week after that. Uh, is is the plan working so far from what you've seen off Reacher? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I, I need to know where we're going. Like episode four. So we got the the Bond villain. He um, you know, he's delayed. Uh, to getting back to, um, and I, and I think it's interesting his phone call where he said, you know, I've done several deals like this. I do deals like this all the time. I'm like this is nothing to me. This is your biggest deal. This is you know, a, this is Tuesday. For me. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that's very interesting. He saw he saw the 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 police, and he's it's delayed. Um, 
I don't know. I, I think that we're leading to a much bigger because we still don't know what the 65 at 100,000 each is. Mm -hmm. And right now it seems like. Uh, was it 650 at 100,000 each? Mm -hmm. It seems like weapons. Well, they said it's weapons. It's definitely weapons. We just don't yeah. know what kind of weapons. So my thinking is because. And it's tied to terrorism. Yeah, but think about this on the other end. Why does that interest a software company, a tech company? That's a good question. That so good question. that must mean, so I'm thinking like, um, what was that movie? Uh, the Rock with Nick Cage and, and Sean Connery. Yeah, great movie. Still holds up too, by the way. Yeah. So, but remember, you know, Sean Connery had all the experience, but they needed... Uh, Nick Cage, uh, uh, not because just he was you know an expert at, at bombs, but because he had the technology. You know what I'm saying? Because the more advanced the you know the chipset and all that type of stuff, like that's computers in there. You know what I'm saying? So to arm them, to disarm them, to do all that type of stuff. You know, and now they got the type of technology there. You know, um, they could put a missile on you that sniffs out your dna like it don't miss it's gonna you know yeah. if you go in the bathroom and poop it's like oh did he just poop I got him you mm -hmm. know locked in you know whatever so that type of stuff yeah that, yeah that's definitely worth a hundred thousand you know what i'm saying like super super smart ai driven yeah. missiles or homing you know what i'm saying like something like that yeah i'm thinking and a tech a tech company could definitely be involved you know, I I don't know yet, but well, we got we got a couple of context clues. Uh, we saw during the torture scene, um, our our villain was standing in front of a turbine. Um, yeah. You know, so something aviation, and I'm thinking something mm. something small, mm. but deals with aviation. So the first thing that pops in my head is drones. You know, 650 can fit on a truck. Yeah. Maybe it's drones. Yeah. Uh, with with some technology involved with it, uh, you know, I, this is me wearing my tinfoil hat, but that's the only thing that I could think of because because of the nature. Yeah, but of the it technology. seems like so. But there are they stealing them? You know, are they taking them? And I think they're making them and selling them? them. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this company probably makes and sells you know illegal drones that that could be used for warfare, and then they're selling it selling it to whoever the highest bidder is overseas. Hmm. That's the, that's the only thing. I mean, let, let us know in the comments uh, what you think based off the context clues that we got because we did see that turbine. So something with aviation. Maybe maybe it's a smart missile, like you said. You know, some new kind of smart missile. Because it well, said 650 in that, that, that could be moved on a truck, right? So it can't be a yeah. plane and no planes, only $100,000. Yeah. No military and, planes. Yeah, that. And, and not only that, I mean on a truck. So you think, all right, so you take an 18-wheeler, mm -hmm. semi-truck, still to put 650 or anything, they can't be huge. Right. But that's what I'm saying. Those little bitty ones. Like the little mm. DJ drones. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's it's all just, you know, nobody really knows us. I'm curious what you all think uh, within the chat. Um, you know, or not even not even that, too. Like, you know, you think about other movies you, you've seen recently. Like, even terrible movies, which I know Chuck will get a kick out of this. I was bringing up the greatest franchise known to man. <laughs> um <laughs> Fast and Furious. <laughs> so when they did the Hobbs and Shaw movie, and there have been several other movies that you know have have lent into this, where a lot of the newer weapons are DNA encoded through the you know through the pistol grip or whatever, mm. where you have to have certain codes or whatever to you know that is not your normal Glock that you go pick up from the uh, the pawn shop or even your local you know uh, firing range. Mm. You know to have one that is encoded to your DNA. Or you have to have a, a certain kind of a glove or something with the code to unlock it, so only you can use it. It can't be accidentally fired. Mm. I don't know if it's a hundred thousand, but yeah. that type of technology, and not on just a pistol, like on, you know, on ARs or sniper weapons or right. something like that. Yeah, that's got to be a pretty penny. So. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I don't know. You said something know. that that makes me bring up another conversation piece in a scene that I really enjoyed, uh, and that's when the the pawn shop scene uh, when he had to go and get the guns. Oh, <laughs> I was like, the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, it shouldn't really be difficult for for somebody that is intelligent as Richard to get a to get weapons uh, in America. Uh, and we saw him break it down. You know how this works. I don't know how much of that law is real. 
Uh, but it made but it made sense in the moment. <laughs> I think I think that law is real. I just never heard of anybody circumvent it like that. Mm. But I'm sure that people probably do that type of stuff yeah. all the time. You know, money walk and you know everything else take a hike. Yeah. Like you know, I'd have went in there and I ain't got nothing in my rubber band. I'm not a rubber band man. I got a dollar and a, uh, you know <laughs> crack it, crack jack some hubba bubba bubblicious uh, rapper. <laughs> Here, just take this, hubba you know. Bubba. Boy, you are a child of the '80s. You said hubba bubba. Hey. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even, even chew gum. Anymore. So yeah, I don't even chew gum. So I don't know what they, you know, tried it. I don't know what they. <laughs> they I don't know. Oh, all right. Well, that's a good place. Got to stick a fork in this bad boy. Uh, let us know uh, what we got right, uh, what we got wrong. And the phone one is always, uh, what did we miss? And if you want to get to know <laughs> Hubba Bubba a little bit better, <laughs> every guy, he'll tell them how they can reach out to you. It's me. Uh, find me at Bubblicious uh, <laughs> 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 on all socials at Diamond Mind, D I A M O N D M Y N D, because it's all about this right here. Hey, and if you've been enjoying the conversation, just the way we just chop it up and the banter that we have, go ahead and please hit that subscription button because that's how the people know you're digging what we're giving you. If you want to hear it like real quick and on the fly, go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can get up to date notifications. Big shout out to the Geekish Network, home, home away from home, a uh, place where we got to start. Uh, I want to talk, just take a quick moment to discuss uh, the importance of the Geekish Network, and it is a, a network for people of color by people of color. And we run the entire gambit of all geek technology, geek news, uh, blurred happenings, whatever is hot is going down. Yeah. Every kind of show you could possibly think of. We have a, a, a there's a new show called uh, called Geek Beast that talks about the the day to day new things that are happening in the geek blurred space. Uh, we have uh, binge worthy, which is it, which is a little similar to how we're doing uh, this review for this particular episode, but deals with binging an entire series. Uh, and then you get to get some hot takes. Uh, a matter of fact, let, let me shut up for a little bit. Rakai, is there anything else you want to say regarding uh, the Geekish Network? I mean, the, the Geekish Network is like I said, we have some dope people behind the cameras in front of the cameras and we just talk about everything geek nerd you know blurred related um so that the people are aware you know you get that kind of news for those who are interested from people who look like you yeah. um and yeah we do have a number of shows uh you know geek beasts and you know and if y'all didn't know Sintel is uh is one of the founders you know what i'm saying one of the one of the ogs the og of ogs uh you know of the geekish network and he um was the og on geek beast on binge worthy for the longest we have a uh, pod, pod squadron which is everything uh star wars and we have a number of new shows that are going to be showing up in in 2024 so you know some you may see our face and some you may see us guesting or, or whatever but definitely whatever it is is worth checking out yes absolutely and don't worry there'll be a link in the description so you can get to it quick thank you so much for the time that you've spent with us and we're going to catch you for uh, episode four which should be like right around the corner all right, so, uh, ah, peace. <laughs>